What is that single event that has had the most effect in your life? For Quando Rondo, it is this. After half a dozen people were shot and two others were killed, we have new video tonight of the deadly shooting outside a hookah lounge. Rapper King Vaughn was one of the men killed. The GBI is now investigating because two officers also fired shots. For Quando, ever since Vaughn passed away, every second, every minute, every unknown shadow that colors Quando's curtains, every weird looking dude that works towards him, every unknown sound, every car that seems to have been following him for too long, and of course, every gunshot makes him wonder, is this the day they come for him? Is this the day someone slides for Vaughn? It's undoubtedly an unfortunate situation. And on the 19th of August, 2020, 22, Quando must have felt that day had finally come. Right now, the search is on for three people who police say shot at a Savannah rapper, killing a member of his entourage. It happened in Los Angeles, and cameras captured the aftermath. Shots fired, a fight taken to the streets, and this chaotic scene, the ending of a shooting that started in Los Angeles, California. Although Quando survived the shooting, you could tell he was devastated by this incident. Sheriff's deputies pulling out a man who had been shot in an SUV. At around 5.30 p.m., Quando Rondo and his entourage were at a mobile gas station in Beverly Grove, just a street across from the popular Beverly Station. Unfortunately for Quando and his homies, they were just a few seconds from being ambushed and shot in execution style. After filling up the car, and just as they were about to leave the gas station, a white four-door sedan arrived at the alley way right next to the station. Three men popped out of the vehicle and began shooting at Quando's black Cadillac. Uh, they gassed up their vehicle, and as they were getting into their vehicle, a, a white car approached from the alley. Uh, three men got out of that car. They were in all dark clothing. Uh, they approached, uh, fired numerous shots. Quando and his men were indeed caught off guard, and their car was shot at multiple times. But while they were being sprayed with bullets, the driver manages to start the car and rushes out of the station. And this is surely what saved Quando's life. The Black Escalade eventually stops in the middle of West Hollywood, a few blocks away from the crime scene, and specifically not far away from the sheriff's station. Someone in the car then called 911, but by the time the paramedics arrived at the scene, one of Quando's closest friends, Lul Pab, was dead. And Quando's reaction to Lul Pab's lifeless body being pulled out of the vehicle shows you just how close the duo were. Quando even released a song titled Long Live Pab as a tribute to his close friend. Then he also put up several posts on Instagram mourning the loss of his dear friend, including a picture where Quando showed that a picture of himself and Lul Pab is the lock screen wallpaper of his phone. However, whenever Quando shares a post about his dead friend, most of the comments under his post aren't commiserating or consoling him about his loss. Instead, the rapper's comments section is spammed with comments mocking him for the loss of his dear friend. For every low pab picture Quando shares, most of the comments he gets are from fans claiming that they slide for Vaughn and got revenge for his death, while the other half are insinuating that Lil Durk finally got revenge for King Vaughn's death. Now, no one can confirm for sure whether Durk did put out the hit that got Lil Pab killed. However, these rumors started partly because of Durk's lyrics. On the remix of the song Who Wants Smoke, Durk rapped that people keep trolling him on his page by saying slide for Vaughn, but he already got revenge in blood, but people just don't know it. Dirk might have even referenced the Lil Pab shooting in this song as he also said that people die for pumping gas. The rumors that Dirk might be responsible for Lil Pab's death were also started because of a video posted by DJ Academics. DJ Academics posted a video at the same gas station where Lil Pab was killed, but the interesting part of this video was that he had Lil Dirk's song Sensation playing in the background, and it was also clear and intentional that Academics wanted everyone to know where he was and what specific song was playing. However, some sources state that Dirk might not even be involved at all. Some people believe that Quando and his goons were attacked because they didn't check in with the Crips and because they disrespected the land when they got to Cali. If you from out of town and you banging the hood from California, you don't deal with the same we deal with in LA. So you claiming this for a fashion and then we really out here dying. Yeah, we feel betrayed. We will book your the man who is speaking in the video you just saw is called Brick Baby. Brick Baby is not only a member of the Crips, he is also a member of OTF. And this is one of the reasons why a number of people are suggesting that Dirk is responsible for the death of Lil Pab. In fact, Brick Baby might have even self-snitched in a No Jumper interview. He stated that many people claim you can't say slide for Vaughn anymore because of the death of Lil Pab. Yeah, slide for Vaughn, right? Nobody. Yeah. They say you can't say that no more. Why? Oh, yeah, because of... Wait, no, wait, no, no, like, they who died? Say you can't say that no more. Oh, because of FVG Cash? Oh, who? Nah, because Lil Pop. 
Still, what makes the entire scenario even more interesting is that there was a time when Quando Rondo, Lil Durk, King Von, and even NBA Youngboy all got along. This was the time before what started as a rap beef became an interstate gang war. Back in March 2019, just a year before King Von passed away, he and Quando were even hanging out backstage at a concert. In fact, the duo were wearing matching outfits, and Quando was even hyping Von up and dissing 63rd Street, who are King Von's major ops in Chicago. I'm saying no, I'm 63rd. Obviously, this was a time where there was peace between OTF and NBA. And in August 2019, Lil Durk posted a list of his 50 greatest rappers of all time on Instagram. And Lil Durk included both NBA Youngboy and Quando Rondo on this list. During this period, Durk and Youngboy even collaborated on one of his songs. He featured Youngboy on his song My Side in November 2017. It seems Durk even tried to sign Youngboy in the same year because Youngboy rapped on the intro to his song GG Tell OTF I Do Not Sign NBA That Be My Gang. But it's not only Durk and Youngboy that used to kick it together. Even Quando Rondo has a song with Lil Durk. On Quando's first commercial mixtape, Life Before Fame, he featured Durk on the track. Quando was a fan of Lil Durk's music and he dropped Durk's name on several of his songs. On the song Dope Boy Dreams, Quando rapped, Signed to the streets three times, I feel like Durk yo. And on the song in my section, Quando even had more praises for Lick Durk, praising him for giving him advice he gave me about the industry. During this period, Durk even mentioned Quando as one of the rappers he had been spending time with in the studio. In fact, even Lul Pob was a fan of the man whom many believed ordered the shooting that took his life. Lul Pob once tweeted about Durk's song, This ain't what you want, praising Durk for the quality of the song. All of this is why many people were surprised when OTF and NBA started beefing. No one knows exactly when they all started having issues. However, it seems the beef started just around the same time that Quandon and King Von were seen hanging out backstage. Von was on an Instagram live with his fans and after some time, the grandson started having a go at young boy. You young boy? A month after this Instagram Live, Vaughn would continue dissing and disrespecting NBA Youngboy. In an Instagram Live video, King Vaughn stated that Youngboy was capping on his songs. Youngboy talking about on this song, bro. What? You talking crazy on this man. Oh, yeah? He ain't even like that. Oh! On his ass, man. Nah. On his ass. <laughs> All that cap. You got cap in your raps. Go straight, boss. Don't hit the white lady. You got cap in your hey. raps. Von was insinuating that Youngboy was a fake gangster and that he wasn't real or living the life he rapped about in his songs. During this period, the beef was about sneak disses and subliminals in their songs. When Youngboy was released from jail on August 15th, 2019 for a shooting that violated his probation, King Von welcomed him home with a tweet that called him ugly. At this point, it still wasn't fully clear whether there was real beef between OTF and NBA or maybe it was just a healthy competition. In October 2019, when DJ Academics tweeted that NBA, Youngboy was the realest street rapper. Lil Durk responded with his own tweet, naming King Von was the realist instead. In February 2020, earlier in the same year that Von was shot, King Von put out a tweet that suggested he and Youngboy even had a song together, stating that Youngboy should drop the song rather than holding it to his chest. However, the issue that seemed to make the beef between Youngboy and Von quite serious was because of King Von's girlfriend Asian Doll and NBA's baby mama Janya. Von and Asian Doll were in love, and he had always shown that he's possessive of his woman. He once posted a video showing that he beat someone up in the studio for calling his girlfriend a Asian reason my hair like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Come on, wait, no. Somebody <laughs> called my girlfriend a <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> and you ain't gonna smack one of them for <laughs> However, in the summer of 2020, Vaughn and Asian were going through a complicated on and off stage. Vaughn would sometimes tweet that they had broken up, and other times he would tweet about how close they were, and it seemed he could not even get enough of her. But a few months after this, it seemed King Vaughn and Asian Doll had completely called it quits, as Vaughn shared pictures of himself holding hands with someone new. 
On the same day, Vaughn put out another tweet stating that no one would believe the female he just made a hit with. Many of the comments under this post stated that King Vaughn had been seen hanging out with NBA young boy's baby mama Janya Meschel. Various pictures were later released that confirmed that King Vaughn was indeed messing around with the mother of NBA's fourth child. For a man like NBA Youngboy whose street cred is very important for his brand, this was a clear sign of disrespect and humiliation. The situation even became worse when tweets by King Von's sister began rumors that Von and Janya might have even made a sex tape during the time they spent together. An inside source even claimed that they didn't record any song the night they were in the studio together and they just had slept together instead. And Von seemed to confirm this rumor on the song Rock Gold with PNB Rock when he suggested that someone's baby mama was bad in bed. Janya eventually denied the rumors and insisted that they only made music together so that she could make her money to feed her son. We walked to the table to play the little game after my studio session and I went home. That's it. Y'all trying to make stories out of nothing. I don't that man. Ain't nobody for the streets. I'm just trying to get my money to take care of my son. Period. This was the period when the beef between OTF and NBA was escalating. Around the same time, and for some unknown reason, King Von's childhood friend Lil Reese tweeted that he would beat up Quando Rondo when he sees him. Quando replied with a video stating that Reese was only capable of doing nothing. Man, that ain't gonna do nothing to me. Don't need no academics. Man, you don't deserve to live no more, bit, bro. I hope you on oh God. This video was confirmation that there was now a full-blown beef between King Von Dirk, Youngboy, and Quando Rondo. This wasn't just another rap beef anymore. It was now a war between two deadly gangs from different states. Not long after this, NBA Youngboy would drop one of his famous murder anthems, Dead Trolls. Youngboy rapped that he can't wait to shoot someone from out of town as soon as they land, and he also seemingly dissed Janya for messing with his ops for money. Some fans also claimed that Youngboy also predicted King Von's death on this same song, because Youngboy rapped about killing someone in Atlanta, the same city where King Von was gunned down. This song was released just two months before King Von was killed. Youngboy also claimed that he would do it after their show and Von was killed after performing at a show. Things would continue to get personal between Von and Youngboy. Just two days before King Von was killed, Youngboy posted a snippet of a song he made with Asian Doll titled Meet the Reaper. And there were several rumors that NBA Youngboy had given Von a taste of his medicine by allegedly sleeping with Von's ex, just like Von had supposedly done with Janya. But unfortunately, Von would be killed shortly after this. On the 6th of November 2020, just after midnight in Atlanta, King Von tweeted his location for the evening stating that he would be at a show at a club in Atlanta called Opium. Von did perform at Opium, and just after 1 a.m., he quoted a tweet from Youngin Ace and stated that his crew are looking to catch someone he sees as his food. Von was clearly in the mood for a fight on this night. And while King Von was performing at Opium, Quando Rondo and his homies were shooting the video for a song called The Drop. Also, King Von left the club in an SUV and the song playing in the car was Young Boy's song, My Window. But after leaving the club, rather than go back to his Airbnb, he surprised his security team by deciding to go to the Monaco Hookah Lounge, where Quando was also hanging out with his entourage. And when Von was leaving the club, he got into a fight with Quando Rondo in the parking lot with King Von, throwing the first punch. Von was then shot and hit five times by Quando's friend, Lil Tim. Von's homies eventually dragged his limp body to a car and took him to a hospital. But what makes this story even crazier is that Vaughn and Lil Tim were taken to the very same hospital, the Grady Memorial Hospital. Quando made the bizarre decision of live streaming how he helped Lil Tim get a quick response at the emergency department of the hospital. Uh, Hold on, you come can't on, move on. on that thing, You got it, bro. my fault, my fault. Yeah? Ma'am, he's shot, what you mean, wrong side? Come on, come on. Come on, come on man, please, come on, all right. Okay. Get him, get him a wheelchair. Man, what you mean I gotta stay right here? Later that night, one of Chicago's most notorious gangsters and close friend of Dirk and Vaughn, THF Bezu put up a post saying that they would have killed Quando if he hadn't started a live video. Bezu stated that Quando started the live video because he got scared, and truly starting a live video was quite smart, and that might just have been what helped him make it through this night. Fortunately for Quando, Lul Tim survived his injuries, but for King Von, he was already in critical condition. When he arrived at the hospital, 
and despite the hospital staff's best efforts, Vaughn was pronounced dead at exactly 4.48 in the morning. And this was the moment Quando's life changed forever. Unfortunately, Quando had become a walking target, and word on the street was that a $1 million bounty had been placed on his head. 14 days after the shooting, Quando released the song End of Story to share his own version of what happened that night. However, many people felt that Quando was mocking King Vaughn with the name of the song. Everyone knew had a series of songs titled Crazy Story, and Quando's title was suggesting that he was the one who had put an end to King Vaughn's story. On the song End of Story, Quando seemingly confirmed that a million dollar hit had indeed been placed on his head. On the only verse of the song, Quando's lyrics were, a million on my head, that's what they say, that's all you got. Make it eight, come run up on me. Bite the bait slash. Everyone knew someone from Vaughn's camp must have been the one who set the price. And because of the amount that was being talked about, word on the street was that Dirk was the one who put the hit on Quando. But it wasn't just about the money that was put on his head. Fans were speculating that Dirk was doing his behind the scenes to jeopardize the careers of not just Quando, but also NBA Youngboy. Some reports suggested that many of Quando's shows were canceled because Vaughn had bought all the tables for the show. Dirk even rapped on his song Hellcats and Trackhawks that they were looking for someone at his shows. However, although he survived the incident without being shot, you can't deny that Quando was just as much a victim of this incident as Vaughn. Surveillance footage has shown that Vaughn was the one who started the fight by throwing the first punch. Quando even stated that he didn't even know it was Vaughn that punched him till the next day. However, Quando's actions after the shooting has only seen him mocking Vaughn's death and continuously inflaming the situation. First, it started with the title of his song, End of Story. On the same song, Quando also had lines like, blood on your brother on the ground, go and pick your mans up. And on his song, Soul Reaper, Quando rapped at someone, but they spanked him, and it's lights out. This was seemingly another reference to the Vaughn situation, but Quando has also continued to drop bars about how dangerous his life has become ever since the Vaughn incident. He once stated that his grandma told him he was close to his casket, and that he always has a gun on him anytime he leaves the house, because truly, it's seems the boys in the street are continuously grinding for that $1 million bag. All of Quando's shows had been canceled because, as I told you earlier, Dirk had reportedly bought all the tickets to the show, while the other shows didn't happen because most promoters didn't warn to book Quando for their shows, because the man had simply become a security risk. Everyone knew that the men in the ski masks would pull up to any show that Quando was at and shoot up the place. Quando had to wait six months after Vaughn's death before he was finally able to perform again, and at the very first show, Quando Quando almost lost his life. Back in May 2021, Quando Rondo was supposed to perform in Georgia, and for obvious reasons, he was going to perform in front of a small crowd. If you are wondering how small, the crowd was going to be around 500 or less people. Quando also had all of his homies on stage with him as an extra security measure. It seemed everything was going well for Quando, and he was able to finish the show without a hitch. However, just being at the event at all had exposed his location to the ops. Just three hours after midnight and at exactly 3.20 a.m., Quando and his entourage were at the parking lot of a convenience store, just 10 minutes away from the club where Quando performed. Quando Rondo and his homies were shot at from across the street. Fortunately for Quando, he was not hit by any bullet. However, someone in his entourage was hit in the hand and rushed to a nearby hospital. Some sources state that Lul Pob was also with Quando when this shooting happened. And after Quando survived another shooting, he wasn't going to miss a chance to use this incident to clown his ops. Quando, Lil Pab, and the man who shot King Von, Lil Tim, were in a clubhouse chat with OTF's Lil Varney when he decided to remind his ops that they had once again failed to hit him. I'm sorry, though. I wish the game missed your mouth. Yeah, he shouldn't. That's what cost <laughs> 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 Hey! Hey, hey, one thing about us, though, we don't do like, no missing. Quando was once again mocking OTF and Vaughn's death by making it clear to Lil Varney that unlike his ops who had now missed him twice, he and his homies don't miss, and he didn't stop there. Quando continued and went all in by stating that King Vaughn was dead, and there was nothing his people could do about it. And that's the fact that we mad because the main gone, and that's the fact that we mad because they gone. Now I ain't taking sides here, I'm just here to give you the facts. Quando Rondo and Lul Tim might not have planned to kill King Von, but they have repeatedly shown no remorse for King Von's death. I mean, you would expect that if people have tried to kill you multiple times, you just strap up, keep your mouth shut, and stay vigilant. But that's not the case for Quando. However, after some time, it seems Quando Rondo did try to squash the beef with Lil Durk. Leaked DMs that were allegedly sent by Quando to Lil Durk showed him desperately begging Durk to let them dead the beef. 
Quando supposedly told Dirk that the whole issue was going too far and he could no longer do shows. Rondo wanted to hop on a call with Dirk, but he wasn't having it and simply told him to stay safe. It seemed Quando was another man in the DMs while pushing a different narrative when he's in the studio and his public antics on social media. Quando eventually came out to deny that he sent Dirk any message. He put up a post that simply said, don't believe anything on the internet, I ain't DM nobody. And on the one year anniversary of King Von's death, Quando seemed to resume the trolling. He tweeted, I never forgave you for what you did that hurt me till this day. This was probably a reference to the fact King Von Sucker punched him. But it's not only Quando who has continued to diss King Von after he was killed, even even NBA Youngboy took shots at Vaughn as well. Shortly after Quando's tweet, Youngboy was doing a clubhouse interview with DJ Academics, and he decided to have a go at Vaughn as well. He stated that some people come into the industry and start dissing him, but after some time, the same gangsters tend to be around no more. Man, we see how this turned out with, we, we see how this turned out with certain that come inside the rap game and feel like, oh, I'm the one who they got to get into with for the, for the make, for the, for the, for the reach this thing point of what, Man, boy, you can stink like you're a gangster, boy. And that ain't gonna show you something, boy. You, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't seen this. We didn't seen this. Don't wanna be a, wanna be a gangster too bad. And that wanna be a killer too bad, man. You, man, you better calm your stupid ass down for you can't have no type of emotion no more, boy. Young boy then posted a picture on his Instagram telling his ops to stay safe. This was probably a reference to Dirk's reply to Quando's leaked DMs and also a sort of confirmation that Quando probably sent those messages. And on the 12th of January 2022, NBA Youngboy dissed King Von again on the song Bring the Hook. Youngboy rapped that he's smoking that O-Block pack and that King Von got folded up in Atlanta and the disrespect didn't end here. Youngboy then mocked someone whose body was stitched up and this was another shot at King Von whose leaked autopsy showed that his body had to be stitched up at the morgue. Youngboy then went on to say that Vaughn must have seen gremlins because of the way that his body shook. And on another song titled No Switch Young Boy even boasted about the fact that his rapper Quando Rondo was involved in the death of King Vaughn as he stated that his team are rapper slayers. A few months after this song was released, Lil Durk dropped another verse that got people speculating again about whether he did order the shooting that led to Lil Pop's death. On Gucci Mane's song Rumors that Durk was featured on, he rapped that he only wanted the specific bodies that he paid for. Dirk is probably referring to the $1 million bounty that he allegedly placed on Quando Rondo. And this also fueled the speculation that he was behind the Lul Pab shooting. Then he stated that he's following people whenever they are in Atlanta, a city that Quando Rondo surely can't avoid as Atlanta is currently the most important place to hip hop. So what do you think? Do you believe that Dirk is indeed behind the death of Lil Pab? And if you enjoyed this video, click a video on your screen for more crazy deep dives into your favorite rapper just like this one.